The market uh, is not in sell mode. The market is not in buy mode right now. We're kind of in digestion mode, kind of a scenario of uh, a marathon runner. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update show. Hope everybody is doing well. It's been about five or six days since I recorded a video. I pretty much used the long Labor Day weekend to kind of just to just put everything to the side, decompress, take a deep breath, enjoy some life, just just take some time off, regenerate the brain, and come back uh, strong uh, on Tuesday. Hopefully, you guys had an amazing Labor Day. Uh, this is towards the end of summer, although uh, September 21st is the official uh, end of summer, but my kids start school, I think, tomorrow or Thursday, and I'm sure like the rest of you guys, you already started or uh, are about to. So summer, almost in the books, but ultimately, again, it is what it is, part of life, and we take the good, bad, and the ugly. So let's talk about the market. Before we get begin, if you are brand new to the channel, uh, like, like, subscribe, share, tell a friend, all that good stuff. Again, we try to give uh, the, the most unbiased opinion on the market, not from a three-week hold, uh, three-week view, or three-month view, or three-year view. It's basically day-to-day, -day, right? Because the market is such a fluid situation. There's so many different components, moving parts, and different wrenches that could be thrown into the mix that it's very, very tough to try to predict, to try to be smart enough to understand what happens the market does. We just try to take the data in and make a game plan on the next day of trading. So last time we spoke, uh, the Qs, if you guys remember, reclaimed back the 50-day moving average. That's a bullish thing. We, again, we, we talk about uh, this on the channel a lot. Uh, over the 50-day is bullish. Below the 50-day is bearish. Again, the market doesn't need to go up every single day. Uh, above the 50-day in the market doesn't need to go down every single day below the 50-day. Uh, but the point is, it's a general direction uh, in that area. And, and you can see that the Qs had a great, great run. Uh, they had, as soon as they reclaimed uh, the 370 level, we went all the way up to almost 381 uh, in four sessions. And now we're just kind of just unwinding a little bit. That's the best way of saying it. Uh, the market uh, is not in sell mode. The market is not in buy mode right now. We're kind of in digestion mode, kind of a scenario of uh, a marathon runner, you know, just finished 26 miles, uh, finished the marathon. No matter how great uh, that marathon competitor is in, in, in its shape, uh, feels good about themselves, they just got to be tired after a 26-mile run. Uh, and that's exactly what the market is right now, just a little bit tired. I, you know, you know again, we, we talk about a healthy pullback would be uh, would be a good thing, okay? Uh, but the longer they consolidate, uh, the better, the, the higher probability will go higher. Uh, the more important part is for the keys from a dynamic uh, macro point of view, the, the longer, as long as we keep on uh, closing above uh, 370, which is the 50-day moving average, that's a good thing, right? So you'll definitely see days uh, that the market is going to pull in and it's going to look like, well, that's it. This is ending the rally. It's not. Uh, the end of the rally happens when you lose the 50-day moving average. And what we've seen in recent, uh, just recent memory, when we lost the 50-day moving average last time, we only had a five-day sell-off before we started rallying back up. So right now we have a five-day, four out of the last five days of buying after reclaiming the 50-day uh, moving average. And as long as we continue to close uh, above 370, it will be deemed bullish. Uh, SPY, kind of the same thing, right? Kind of the same thing. A little bit heavier here, as you can see, uh, the SPY lost uh, the five-day moving average today. Uh, is it possible it has one more day of a back test back to uh, retesting the 50-day moving average? Sure, absolutely. Of course it's possible. If you look at the diamonds, uh, if you look at the diamonds that are correlated with the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones closed right at the 50-day moving average. Is it possible to get one more yank into the 10? Sure, absolutely. Again, the market needs a little bit of a breather. Uh, the one that is notably weaker is the IWM, is the Russell. Uh, this was definitely uh, the lagger of all three uh, major indexes. And this is the one that was down today uh, 2%. You know, when NASDAQ pretty much down, you know, NASDAQ composite was down literally 10 points. 
uh, while the IWM was down 2%, you could clearly see uh, the speculation money aspect of the market is not a good thing. So again, it's very, very tough to turn around and go, we want to be long everything going into tomorrow. But you'll see, and the reason why I left the, the options flow monitor, you'll, you'll see uh, despite a little bit of consolidation or you know, a little bit of tiredness uh, in the market, you'll see that they are starting to come with uh, out of the money calls in a lot of your favorite names. A lot of the uh, the cult classic names, we'll get to them uh, in a second. But again, orderly pullback is very necessary. It's much appreciated. It's much needed because again, the last thing you want to do, uh, we started talking about this in the webinar towards the end of the week. The last thing you want to do is have a market that just goes straight up. As much as it, it, it seems cool and it feels great, it, it, even the biggest bulls start to turn around and go, wait, this is too far, too fast. Um, I want to see, you know, I want to kind of put, move my money into the sidelines uh, and see what happens next. But again, so uh, ultimately, uh, very, very healthy so far. Again, would, would it shock me if we get another uh, day or so of, of the market pulling back in? Uh, not, not, that's again, that's a healthy thing. The cool thing about uh, this market, uh, a little bit of a digestion, a little bit of distribution is you're still getting strong names. And that's kind of what we left off. If you guys remember last Wednesday, I said, even if the market rests, you're, start, you're going to start seeing other stocks trying to get a back above the 50-day moving average. And that's a very, very good thing. And if you look at a lot of names, especially the cold classic names, you'll see a, a very similar, you know, si similar theme here. Apple, right, got above the 50-day. Again, you know, the market rested today. Apple was green. Uh, Meta got back above the 50-day moving average. Again, the rest of the market rested. Meta's green. Tesla got back above the 50-day moving average today, right? Again, a lot of things rested. Tesla's up 11 points. So you kind of get the message. Despite the Dow being down uh, 200 points, a lot of these names are starting to wake up. And a lot of these names are starting to wake up with option flow. And that's the name of the game. We could have distribution as long as we want, whatever the case may be. But once you start seeing institutional money flow come back in, in those names, those are the names that are probably going to wake up. So let's talk about NVIDIA first, right? And you can see here, you know, despite NVIDIA you know, not being great today, it had a great run, still up a fraction of the day, again, despite the weakness in the overall market. But you could see, look where, you know, look where the institutional money flow started betting today. Again, doesn't necessarily have to go there, but at least to know that the institutional money is aligned in that direction is a good thing. So you can see here kind of, uh, you have NVIDIA, this guy came in a little less than 100 grand for the 500 weeklies. This guy came in 60 grand for the 535s. Guys, 535s is 50, 60 points out of the money with 10 days till expiration, right? That's a lot, right? This guy came in for 160 grand for the 500s. This guy came in for two weeks out, 525s, 525s. Uh, this guy came in for the 495 weeklies. You can see institutional money flow. Look at Meta, right? Meta as well. Look at Meta. Not a lot, not as much as, uh, not as, not as, much as uh, NVIDIA, but you know, look at Meta. You know, this guy came in for 700, almost 800 grand for the January 340s. That's four, you know, that's that's a, you know, 11 11 percent away. It's a big move. Look at this move here. The February 320s, 2.1 million. Uh, the the weekly 305s. Next week's 310s. Next week's 310s. Right. This guy came in in the, at the money for 200 grand. You know, look at look at Tesla. Right. You're not going to see the, the 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 majority of the option flow here. But look at Tesla. They were coming in for the 260 weeklies, the 285s for the end of the month, the 255s in the money, 260 weeklies. We saw, and again, this mine doesn't stretch all the way down, but if you go through uh, your option scanner, like I use Flow Algo, for example, but if you go through your option scanner, you'll see today they were making massive seven-figure bets for Tesla for the January 300 call. So that's a good sign. So the longer we have this little bit of digestion, distribution, rest, whatever you want to call it, but yet their institutional money is still coming in uh, deep out of the money calls like we've seen with Meta, NVIDIA, Tesla, I'm sure there's others, but that's a very, very good thing. And as long as the market continues to build above the 50-day moving average, especially on the queues, queues are the ones I really, um, you know, uh, I really watch. I don't care about the IWM. I really don't care about the Dow because the Dow, like today, the Dow is down 200 points and the majority of these beta names were fractionally green on the day, if not really green on the day, uh, like uh, Tesla. So again, Nothing, you know, nothing materialistically has uh, changed on the needle. Uh, again, as long as we close, continue to close above 370 on the Qs, that's bullish. Once we get below 370, that is a problem. Again, is it possible we have one more day of, uh, you know, a little bit of weakness, a little bit of distribution, selling, whatever the case may be, very, very possible. But again, 
a lot of really good names are still starting uh, to look pretty good for the rest of the week and going into uh, the fourth quarter. So again, today started out a little bit slow, right? Uh, initially, I had uh, Tesla and NVIDIA as downside candidates today, okay? Just because of the way uh, they closed last week, that quickly changed with with, with Tesla. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but more important, the day started out pretty slow, and then it got faster and then more aggressive very, very quickly and actually turned into be uh, a pretty good start to a shortened holiday uh, driven week. So let's talk about it. So Tesla obviously never got the 242. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, I was watching for the 481 uh, flush. It got down to 478 and change, but there was no entry. They they brought it down before they brought it down before the market opened. It went down like three points. We never had a chance to trade it and kind of just sat there all day. Uh, Lyft never got to the 1280, which I really, really like. Look, guys, send me alert on Lyft. I don't think I don't think it'll, it'll get there, you know, get there anytime soon. But watch this like 1280 level eventually. Uh, you know, it's a nice looking chart here. But here's where things got really aggressive. Intel really didn't do anything. It sat around that 33720 level before it just dried up. Here's where things got interesting. So Zoom last Friday, okay, again, there was no video this weekend. But last Friday, they started coming for uh, the, the, the September 29th $80 call buyers one after another. Again, that's $8 out of the money. Uh, 72.55 needs to build. Zoom woke up today. Really nice move on Zoom. Congratulations for all you guys who caught it. It took out the 72.55 level, traded all the way up to 76. Big, big move here. I don't know uh, if the people are betting there's going to be lockdowns. I don't think there will be. I don't think anybody will will uh, acknowledge them. But uh, you know, and who knows what they're betting for? But really nice move there. Uh, IoT 3130 needs to build. IoT had really nice earnings on Friday. Uh, it stopped at 3120, it reclaimed 3130, and closed pretty much at the highs near uh, 32. This thing looks higher as well. Uh, Boeing, you know, I took a little scalp on Boeing. Nothing big there. You know, it tra traded from the 22 to like the 2020 20s level. No nothing there. But uh, TLRY, congratulations for you guys who caught TLRY. Uh, th uh, uh, three. 16 needs to confirm. Nice move here. You had a really nice move here at one point, almost a 10% move. Traded all the way up to 340 before it kind of reverse course, uh, like a lot of names. Uh, NVIDIA never got, well, NVIDIA stopped right at the five day moving average, didn't really do anything. Microsoft was really good. I still don't know what the news was. Uh, I got along off the th 333. It gave us like a dollar 70 move. It's talking about a matter of minutes. Like, this is another case example why. The stock was really strong as the market was doing nothing. And again, this is the first close uh, above the 50-day moving average. Again, keep this in mind, guys. A lot of big names are starting to really get above the 50-day. Cult leaders, cult classics, really big following institutional darlings. Uh, I still want, I still like Microsoft. I'm going to watch this thing above today's channels, but a really nice move on Microsoft. And then Tesla got really, really strong. So five-day uh, five supply on Tesla's 254. Uh, needs to get above it to stretch. Uh, it did that. Uh, Tesla put in its highest close from last, well, no, not from last week. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm too, too early in the week. Um, it reclaimed back the 50-day moving average, traded all the way up to 258. Here's the key with Tesla, right? And this is what I want to see. You see this whole channel here, right? We're getting very to the top of this channel here, especially with all this option flow coming in. If Tesla could clear out this top of the channel, and it doesn't necessarily have to do it tomorrow, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe it has an inside day tomorrow. But Tesla had a really big, strong day today compared to the rest of the market. Keep an eye on this top of the range. Watch last week's channel. If this thing can start clearing out last week's channels, Tesla could wake up very, very aggressively. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on that as well. But a nice little pop here today on Tesla. And I believe that's it. So again, good distribution is healthy for the market. Digestion is healthy for the market. The last thing you want is it a linear market that gets pulled on every single downtick of the futures? The longer we consolidate, the better. I know for us traders, we're you know we're, you know we're one of those you know we're creatures of well, what have you done for me lately? Meaning, what the hell have you done to me 30, 30 seconds ago? But sometimes again, we have to take patience, kind of wait, uh, kind of stay patient, kind of wait for uh, trades to develop. Sometimes they'll develop the next day. Sometimes they'll de develop the next hour. But sometimes they will develop in the latter part of the week. So keeping one eye on the option flow market and one eye on the technical levels is only going to help you when they finally confirm. So when they do confirm, we're ready. The correlation with the option flow is a plus and hopefully good things happen. So guys, thank you for being 
uh, part of this 15 minute journey. We are back tomorrow uh, with another video. Hopefully you guys had a great, great Labor Day weekend and hopefully you guys are happy, healthy, and you're ready for the fourth quarter. Guys, God bless and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.